Well, foreign journalists have arrived in Pyongyang for the commemoration of the anniversary. Now, they were invited by North Korea. The government has lined up a series of events culminating in a big military parade on Saturday, as we've been talking about, and that's the date the armistice was signed in 1953. Channel News Asia's Sujati Siswal is in Pyongyang. For most journalists, this is our first visit to North Korea. The flight from Beijing took just about two hours. And for most of us, flying on a North Korean airline was a novelty. It was already dark when we arrived at Pyongyang's airport. There wasn't much for us to make of the country's gateway for international visitors. We assume this building, about the size of two basketball courts, is a normal passenger terminal. But we were the only passengers. Photos of the country's leaders were conspicuously displayed. Like most airports in major capitals around the world, our luggage was thoroughly checked. But there seemed to be less control now. Previously, visitors had to surrender their mobile phones. Now, not anymore. But international SIM cards still can't be used. However, local SIM cards are available, costing some 43 US dollars each for less than 15 minutes of talk time for overseas call. Most of the journalists covering this commemoration are being put up in this hotel in Pyongyang. Well, for obvious reasons, and each is being escorted by two officials. One, a translator, and the other one is a minder. The officials will be with us throughout our stay in North Korea, making sure we do not stray from the official events they've lined up. And Pyongyang is expected to mark the 60th anniversary of the Armistice Agreement this Saturday with a massive military parade. Sujari Siswo, Channel News Asia in Pyongyang.